Hey everyone, it's Ampro here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be making two visual effects, a slash and an explosion. I'll basically walk you guys through it step-by-step step so that you can see the process of making effects like these. I'll also be putting texture IDs in the description so you can follow along. I decided to make another VFX tutorial since you guys seem to really like the previous one. But before we get into it, I'd like to say that I spent many hours trying to find all the right textures and create these effects. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys dropped a like and a sub. Thanks a lot. Now let's get right into it. Okay, let's start with the slash effect. It's really just eight textures. And these are the eight textures. Uh, just a slash, slash wind, two different wind textures. And then for the hit effect, it's honestly just a bunch of dots and shards. So here's a look at what the particle looks like um, all separately. So we got the main slash and then this slash wind effect. There's actually two of them, just with different colors to create, kind of create like a layering. Same with the crescent, I'm pretty sure uh, the wind three is just wind one, just white. So they're basically the same thing. As you can see, it creates a little bit of like nice layering. You play them all at once, kind of creates like a cool looking texture all together. And then if you play the whole thing, there you go. That's like the baseline slash. For the hit effect, um, as I said before, it's just a bunch of dots and shards. There's dots, a little flash of light, the break apart effect with like smaller shards. Um, that's basically that too. And then just a like little lighter color to create layering. And when you play that, you get that effect. Play it all at once. And that's our slash effect. So now we're gonna try to reproduce this effect starting from just these eight textures. All right, so we're gonna start with just making a part. Um, you can size it however you want. I don't know what I was doing here, but kind of mess up a few times. You're also gonna wanna pull up the part just a little bit. Uh, because when you pull it up, you can see the bottom of your um, VFX as well. For some reason during this recording, the pop-ups weren't showing up, so wherever I can, I just edited it back into it. But yeah, just know that something was going wrong with the recording, and um, you guys can't see any of the pop-ups. I'm going to change the texture. Um, I'm going to set it to the slash. Make sure you set the flipbook to a one shot. I don't know why it reverted to loop there. I didn't even, I don't think I manually set that. It just kind of reverted for some reason. Yeah, set it to one shot and for the lifetime, I went for something around 0.4, but you can, you can do it based on how fast you want the slash to be. Or how long you want the slash to last. Uh, it's also important to note that Whenever you set it to velocity perpendicular, like I did earlier, you want to set the speed pretty low. I kind of forget to uh, set the speed there. It's still five, but really it should be like 0 .001. Um, yeah, the rotation is just the initial rotation. The rotation speed is how fast it spins. I use the negative number there because that's just the correct orientation for the uh, slash. For the light influence, light emission, and brightness, you can honestly do whatever you want with it based on how realistic you want it to be. Um, I go for something really bright and flashy here just because that was what the reference was. I think it's about here where I realized that the, the flipbook is still set on loop. But yeah, once it's on one shot, it looks really nice. Um, when you're done with that, um, you can honestly set the color to whatever you want as you can see the color thing is not showing up because the pop-up didn't record but yeah set the color to whatever you want and you can name it uh just name it accordingly so you don't mix it up with other particles next thing we're gonna do we're gonna add the like slash winds they're just like the little wind effects that go around the slash um it's pretty basic um i'm gonna put it in here i'm gonna Set it to velocity perpendicular as well. Light emission one, light influence, I think I said it's zero, or 
I think I set it to zero, right? Yeah, okay. Then the brightness, once again, you can play around with that based on how realistic you want it to be or how flashy you want the slash to look. Um, for the size, I have a plugin for this. But this is what the graph looks like. Um, I just took a screenshot of what it looked like and I put it here. As you can see, it already starts looking dramatically different. Set the mid count to something. Oh, also make sure you have a, a mid count plugin because this makes it way easier to view your VFX. Any mid count thing works. Even the, I think the Aussie Pig one should work if you just go in the toolbox and search for the plugin. Set the rotation speed to like negative 500 and negative 300, just to give it a little variation in spin speed. So not every um, little wind circle spins at the same speed. And set the speed as uh, as I said before at 0 0.001 because you still want velocity particular at work, but you don't want it to like fly off into the sky. Lifetime, I'm gonna go for like 0.4 to 1.2 here, just so it has some variation to how long it lasts. And the transparency graph is also just not showing up here, but I will edit the picture in as you can see. Um, it's a really simple graph, but yeah. Um, and with that, that should be the the slash wind, or I call it wind slash here. I think I changed it back to slash wind. And if I admit it, you can see that it, it already looks pretty similar to the final product. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate that now and just change the color back to like that blue, create a layering effect. Looks pretty nice in my opinion. I don't notice it, but yeah, the slash is supposed to have a 0 0.001 speed, but I have it on five. Uh, from here, the rest of the slashes are pretty similar to the slash wind. They're just called winds, and they literally spin in the same way. Have a slightly lower spread angle, but you can honestly ignore that if you want to. You can change it to whatever you want. It's not too extreme, just it still looks relatively close to the slash. That should be fine. Um, yeah, so this is the ba just a basic like crescent texture. I'm probably just gonna duplicate that after. Yeah. And then this is gonna be slash three. You can name it slash two, but I just had, or yeah, wind three. I had wind two set on a different texture, so I named that one wind three. Uh, so I'm going to add the wind 2 here. And yeah, it should have the a slightly different texture than wind 1, but it's also just a crescent. All right. Okay, now when you play the whole thing, it's already starting to look correct. Um, the transparency for these are going to be slightly different because I, I want it to appear transparent in the beginning just so it doesn't immediate, it doesn't look like it's like expanding radially or something. It should just appear wherever the slash is or at the radius of the slash. Uh, it's the same graph for wind two and I'm gonna do the same thing for three as well. But yeah, the transparency graph is exactly the same. All right. So now when you got all of that, um, you can go ahead and play the whole thing. Once again, make sure your slash is not on speed five. It should be 0.001. So yeah, that's, that's where I changed it there. And there you go. That is the baseline slash effect. Uh, it looks pretty good, checking it from every angle. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to compare it really quick with the reference slash, the one that I made earlier. And yeah, it looks pretty darn similar, so yeah, I would count that as a win. Alright, this part of the video does have the pop-ups, thankfully. I had a particle emitter, um, set it to dots one. It's just going to look like a bunch of dots floating up. Not too much of a difference from what it was before. I'm going to mess with a squash here just to make it not be a perfect circle. 
just having a little bit of squash just makes it kind of like ovalish, more natural looking, a little bit more varied. I'm gonna stretch that a little bit too. And as you can see, it's no longer perfect circles. Uh, we're gonna use left here, and then if you set the shape to like in and out, it goes both directions, which is pretty cool. And that's what we actually want. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of variation there. I'm gonna sh just mess with the drag here, just to show you guys kind of how uh, drag can affect the way the things look. Uh, so I actually used three drag on the original one. So I'm gonna use that as well here. And then if you just set the speed, oh, I set the spread on accident. Yeah, it should be the speed. If you set the speed to negative 50 to 50, as you can see, we're starting to get to what we need. I'm gonna set the lifetime to 1, 1 1.2, kind of like the slash winds. And as you can see, those kind of fly out now. If you set a velocity parallel, um, it'll point in that direction, but we don't really need it for this one since they are just basically specs. So I just set it to facing camera. Uh, rotation speed, I'm gonna add a little bit of rotation here, you don't have to. It honestly kind of looks weird with a little bit of rotation, but I'm just gonna add it because I thought it looked kind of cool. So basically, because the texture is a little bit offset from the center, when you add rotation, it kind of spins around a pivot. So it doesn't spin like perfectly. So it looks like it has a little bit of randomized movement when in reality it doesn't. Transparency, you can honestly leave that alone. Um, if you set the size, you're gonna see another interesting effect here because of the um, offset texture. When you run this, it kind of shrinks back towards the end, creating yet another movement. I just thought it looked kind of cool because it's like sort of unpredictable like where it goes. And that's just the dots. Um, the rest of the particles are pretty similar. Uh, we're just gonna not rotate them. Instead, they're just gonna go in a line. This is gonna be the shards. Texture is gonna look like that. And as you can see, you can kind of see the shards. We're gonna need to get rid of the rotation here. And then I realized that we need to also get rid of the uh, to get rid of the rotation speed. I'm not gonna set it yet because I'm gonna preset the, the velocity of velocity parallel or the orientation of velocity parallel and then set the rotation to 90 because that's how you get to point in the direction that you want it to be in. And then if you set the spread to zero, you can kind of see like how you get that dissolving effect of like the main flash you rewatch the showcase portion, you can see that there's like a little flash and then it like fades into these little specks. And that's kind of how I achieve this. I just make them little pieces with a little bit of squash here and there. And yeah, it looks like a main beam just like separated into little beams. Uh, shards one is just a typical shard texture. Um, it's gonna be almost identical to this one, except um, it's gonna have a little bit of an angle to it. But you can see it's just a basic shard texture. Uh, spread angle, set it to like 12, 12, or I think I ended up changing that, maybe. I'm not too sure. Uh, I duplicate it here and I check the size, yeah. it's. It's basically the same thing all across. I set this one to white and then I set both of the light emissions to zero. You should probably set all the light emissions to zero. I think that's what I end up doing. Uh, transparency for the second one, since I made it white, I wanted it to be a little bit more transparent. So it's kind of like a background color. Like it's kind of like backing up the uh, main shard thing. Now when you play it, there's a little bit of layering there. You're just missing one thing really. Um, and that's gonna be the flash or the light. 
And this is just gonna be a really big shard and it's gonna flash and then disappear. It'll do that all really quickly too, so it's almost not noticeable, so. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna duplicate that. Duplicate shards and then just replace the texture. It's gonna emit one. I'm gonna get rid of that speed. It's gonna be really slow, like point one. Okay, and then the size is gonna go up. I don't think I got the size correct the first time or the second time. I don't know. I think I almost got it. Not quite, because it's like a little too small. Uh, I'm gonna also fiddle with the squash. I'm gonna want it to be a little bit more squashed, kind of like squeezing the line down. It makes the line a little bit longer. Yeah, that looks a little bit more correct. And lifetime's gonna be really low on this one, just so when we play it, it acts more like a flash. I think I messed up the big shard again. Should be just a little bit, a little bit more visible. So I'm gonna just ramp that thing up. Okay, yeah, that, that looks a little bit more like it. So when you kind of play that, you can see like the flash, um, you can see the flash appear and then it kind of breaks down into like the little particles. And then I'm gonna set the position of the hit attachment a little bit more forward. You just kind of have to play around with the offset there on your own. And then I'm gonna reduce these because they kind of went too far. But yeah, that, that's a little bit more tight. It looks a little bit more in form. And then yeah, I'm gonna set the light emission for that one also equal to zero, it's just so it doesn't get overwhelmed by white. Same with the shards here. You want it to actually appear in the right color, so yeah. So yeah, that basically creates the effect. Um, if, you, if we just play the whole thing now, we'll see that it, it looks rather good. And we can compare it over to the original one that I made. You'll see that they're rather similar. One thing I do notice is that the original one is a little bit more blue. Uh, that's just probably because I chose like a more blue color. Um, you can honestly change the color to however you want. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I wanted to fit the explosion effect into this part as well, but unfortunately time is just not going to allow it. The video is already pretty long, and uh, I have been editing this for quite a minute. Leave down in the comments what you think about this type of video, and I'll definitely consider what to do in the future based on that. And if you like what you saw today, Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe. Um, I also got a Discord server that you could join if you need help on anything. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for part two, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you, and bye-bye.